I, I wouldn't want to go into the details true, because true. I, I can imagine because some of it is classified. Yes. Um, but certainly, yes, I have been in uh, in uh, hazardous uh, situations um, uh, because that's what command. When you command soldiers, you have to uh, uh, partake of the same uh, risks. Otherwise, they won't follow you. Um, so, uh, uh, the, 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 the one of the reasons that I, I, I have done well in my in in uh, in command is because I'm willing to take the same risks as my soldiers. So, going to Congo was not for anything else but uh, to be uh, close to to the men that I was commanding. In the same vein, what do you see, uh, because I think this is going to be instructive to people, this world is not ending tomorrow. There will be other presidents in Uganda who will have sons and daughters who may join the army. I want to use this opportunity for you to teach me. What are the advantages, if any, of being the son of a sitting president, more so in the army, or to put it more precisely, are there disadvantages? Because me, I imagine them, but I don't know them. Have you occasionally found that in the course of your own career, you, mm -hmm. you, you almost wish you were not the son of a sitting president? Uh, for me, uh, an advantage of being uh, my father's son is that I have, I have uh, learned a lot from him as a, as a person. As a parent, as a parent, uh -huh. being in close proximity with him has been an advantage in terms of lessons for for life. Um, so I, I consider that a, a big advantage. Uh, but maybe a, a disadvantage is is uh, that people never cannot separate you. They always, they always. Uh, they always uh, put you together as if uh, there is no separation between as is with any family. You, you're also the son of your father, but it doesn't mean that you're, you're identical no, yeah. to, to him. Yeah, so that perception can be maybe considered uh, disadvantageous. Uh, and you know, um, I'm a student of the history of Uganda and a very keen one. I think uh, with your permission, I could tell you, uh, your situation is not peculiar, but because we, we don't really delve into recent history. The first instance we got in Uganda was with the Kawaka Daudi Chua. Four of his sons were enrolled into King's African Rifles. Four. Then, I, I don't know for one reason or another, President Obote, Two of, one of his sons was in intelligence, but I think passing time. President Amin had Taban, who is still around. In fact, he's serving Uganda, I think, in internal security. Genotito Okelo had Captain Opira. Opira died somewhere. He was coming with Lakwena. He didn't pass Magamaga. Uh, so. Uh, it is, it, is, it is not uh, the first time. No, it isn't. And th since it won't be the last, unless a uh, law comes preventing presidents from having, <laughs> which is not likely. What, uh, if this is, I don't know whether this is classified, what, what is the, the best and worst military experience you've had in the course of your work? Uh, there, there are some operations where uh, personally, I could have uh, uh, lost my life. For example, in uh, in Soroti, when we were ambushed by Tablet in, in, in 2003. Brigadier Tablet of yes, LRA. Of LRA. Mm -hmm. Actually, at that time, there was even a rumor that I had, I had been killed. It went around for, for, for some time. So you remember that? Do, do you want me to tell you the, the, that rumor? Uh -huh. We were told that 
your sisters asked their father where you are. This is the rumor. And that the, the father, being what he is, and he was, he was treating you like other soldiers, which to me is unfair, but I'm not him. And that the sisters demanded to, to at least to see the body. That's the story that was circulated, and that until you appeared at some place very dirty, but that you were the one. So that is the rule. The, the, <laughs> so mm. so the, the, that was one. Um, it was a night ambush in, in Soroti, where we lost one soldier. Before you leave that, Afande, how did the other side fare when you lost one soldier? They, they fared worse than, than, than us. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, so, so um, uh, then maybe a good, uh, uh, good, good, one, good experience was when we uh, managed to expel uh, Al-Shabaab from Mogadishu. That was a good uh, you success. You went to Mogadishu? Yes. <laughs> the president went to Mogadishu in 1992, shortly after independence. He flew to Mogadishu when it was a very bad place. And I hear parliament was not amused uh, by learning that he had gone there. Uh, I don't know whether he, he, required, he required their permission, but he went. and. We, we have footage of that, that it, it was rough. Your efforts in Somalia, especially that landing in Mogadishu, before anybody dared to go, was an expression of utmost concern. At Mogadishu International Airport, President Museveni was met by the special representative of the United Nations Secretary General in Mogadishu. The chairman of the Somali National Alliance General I did now controlling 11 of the 18 regions of Somalia, including the air and the seaports. The vice chairman, Mr. Osman Afra, and the secretary general, Mr. Abel Karim. when you look at the, the state brass band, people in rags, having spears, but he went. So you also went? Yes, I went in uh, 2011. Mm. Mm. 2011. When, when Al-Shabaab was still in control of about 
85% of Mogadishu. Coming away from the military, you are a citizen of the Republic of Uganda. Do you vote? Yes. Where do you vote from? In NTV, No, because, the, because we're always on uh, uh, standby during elections. You vote, so you have to vote near, near, near your place of work. Mm -hmm. So I vote from Kampala. Being on standby, do you have time for the, 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 the poor lady who saw her to be with you through thick and thin and her children? Nzizi <laughs> has been not enough time. Mm -hmm. 
how does it ref how many times did you because this is like a tradition now you certainly also didn't see the old man many times in, in those years okay what do you do in your free time if you have any i uh, i like to read mainly military history books mm -hmm. You've so far authored one book. Yes. Which I have read the twice. Did you like it? Uh, yes, I was trying to figure out how much of it was written by your father. You know how malicious I can be. No. <laughs> nothing. He didn't write. He, 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 he just uh, I interviewed him for yes. Certain, yes. certain parts of the book. Yes. Yeah, but he didn't write it. So are you still writing? No, there's no time now, but uh, if I do get time, I'd, I'd love to go back to, to write some more. Okay. Uh, did I tell you that uh, I'm also your OB St. Mary's? Oh. Oh, yes. What year? I was there not long ago, in 1977. Uh -huh. uh, not very long ago. When did you finish? Um, why I don't go to... 1977 to what? To 1977. If you really want to know, <laughs> Brother Chema asked me to leave owing to certain things I would not also, I would call them as classified. But I still feel a lot of pride in, in that school. And I have since tried to mend my ways and stay. In 1980, I think you were more or less a toddler when you and your parents were held at a roadblock in Chireka. Where you, you, you were going to be murdered. What do you remember of this incident? And has it determined your course? I remember it very well because uh -huh. I was six years old. Six? Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. I was six years old. And uh, we were going... I actually joined my parents. Uh, uh, it wasn't. It was. Uh, it hadn't been planned. They were just leaving the house, and I said, "I want to 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 come I'm along." So yes. So they put me in the car, and we and we drove off. We were going to uh, to pick a, a car. There was a there was a thing, there was a garage uh, somewhere in Chireka. We were going to pick a car from there. So he was driving? He was driving himself. Mm. Uh, Mama Janet was in the, pa you know, the passenger seat, front passenger seat. And I was behind with two soldiers. One, one is uh, the late uh, Kasasra. He was called Kasasra. Kasasra. I don't, can't remember his first name. Then the other one was called Lawrence. I think he's also passed away. So we drove, and uh, that time from, from uh, they call it what, Wampeo? Wampeo, the roundabout there. Uh, mm. uh, around the Electro Commission? Uh, no, this other one, near, um, just before you, you, you go on the actual Ginger Road. Yes, uh, that is the one that goes to Port Bay. Ah, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. From there up to to Chireka was there was not much. Uh, there was not. It's not like now with many buildings and because I remember after Lugogo was just a bush. Yes, that is true. It was a bush. There was no, that, 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 that supermarket wasn't there. There was nothing. Uh, Wuma conference hall was not there. Yeah, mm. there was nothing. There was nothing. Mm. So we got to around Chireka and we got to, the, we, we, there were two roadblocks. The first one was manned by Tanzanians, Tanzanian soldiers. Mm. And they let us, they had no issues. As soon as uh, they identified himself, they let us through. 
And then the second soldier, uh, the second uh, roadblock was manned by UNLA. And those ones, uh, uh, as soon as he identified himself, they first, they first started checking the car. And I remember I had a toy, toy pistol. You had? Yes, a toy pistol. <laughs> and they, they said, ah, now you see. You, you, you see? Mm. Even the child has a, a gun. Yeah. So they, they arrested us there and then and put us on the side of the road. Um, and uh, we were there for about five or six hours on the side of the road. Mm. Uh -huh. In the bush. Yes. Mm. And uh, the way we were saved was uh, by the late uh, Fred Rijema. There were no mobile phones. How there was nothing. How does he come to know? The way he came was he, because he was a, an alert person, alert soldier. Once 